Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Real Sports Updates here. Back again with another video. Um, today, I want to kind of get back into free agency, NFL free agency. Um, and I, as I've alluded to in previous videos, the first wave of free agency is over. Just like I said, most of the big money has been given out already. Um, most of the big guarantee money has been given out already. So now, you know, now guys kind of have limited options um as far as you know the free agency process goes you know there's gonna be limited teams a limited amount of teams and um you know for the veterans out there i think they have to make a decision um that's best obviously best for them you know financially that's first off but you know at, at this point a lot of these guys have played a lot of football and you know a lot of them haven't really had too much success um but I kind of wanted to get into like a little list of the available free agents, um, you know, the guys who have not committed to uh, signing to any teams yet. I kind of just wanted to touch on that a little bit because there still are some big names out there. Um, there's still some big fish in the water. And I think I think it's very interesting at this point. You know, I, I was expecting a lot more um, commitments as far as you know the guys who are still out there you know you look at the the list and, and let me get into the list first i'll get into first a list of the top five free agents in my opinion um and i'm just gonna list them off in no order i'm not gonna rank them or anything like that uh just the top five in my opinion and you know and people might agree disagree whatever but it's just just in my opinion the guys who i thought would be signed already but are not you know so that's why i i rank them um, in the top five. So number one, obviously is Tyron Matthew just did a video about him the other day. Um, you know, possibly going to the chargers or whatever. So he's number one. Um, and I'm surprised that he has remained unsigned. Um, he is the best, the best, uh, f free safety, safety option, I guess you could say in the draft. So I, I'm sorry, in the, in free agency, um, so I'm surprised that he has remained unsigned. Um, number two, I'm going to go with Stephon Gilmore, the cornerback. Um, he, we haven't really seen him play at a high level in a couple of years, but I, I'm surprised that, you know, he, I'm surprised that he hasn't been signed. He is, he's still a good, very productive cornerback. Um, you know, at one point I think he was probably the best in the league, you know, with the Patriots, uh, during that, that Super Bowl run that they had, um, their last Super Bowl run, I believe, um, he was he was probably you you could have argued him as the best corner in the league. Um, obviously, uh, J C Jackson was on the same team, and he's emerged um, probably as the best cornerback right now. There's still Jalen Ramsey out there, but uh, Stephon Gilmore, and he's still pretty young too. So, um, you know, I am really surprised that he has not you know been signed. You know, I, I don't know if it's with him, I think it might be a contract thing. I think he might be looking for more money than people are willing to offer him. But, you know, regardless, I'm, I'm still pretty surprised that he hasn't been signed. So he's he's number two on my list. Um, again, I'm, I'm not ranking these guys, but I'm just I'm just going down just the, you know, the top five. Um, so number three, J.C. Treader, the uh, center, former center for the uh, Cleveland Browns. Um, one of the best offensive linemen that are st still out there. Um you know, he was a part of a Cleveland Browns uh, offensive line group that was top five in the league, you know, for the past couple of seasons. Um, they really, really, really were effective in the run game. Um, they were pretty good in the passing game as well, too, but their specialty was run blocking. Um, they were absolutely fantastic. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, both those guys, you know, having really big seasons um, in the backfield. Um, Dearness Johnson as well, too. You know, he's a, the third running back when, when those guys were out or had COVID and stuff like that. So, you know, he was a part of that group. You know, he's the center, so he's the anchor, um, you know, making line calls and all that stuff. So he – I'm surprised he has, you know, hasn't committed to a team yet. Again, it might be a money thing as well with him, too, but he, he really is a guy who I think, you know, if you bring him in um, – if you're thinking about drafting, you know, rookie offensive linemen and you bring him in, you know, now you have, you know, solidified your line. You know, you can have a, a, a worst to first type of thing, you know, going on. If you if you bring J.C. Treader in, you know, he's, he's been really, really good. Um, I thought the Bengals would be all over him, you know, especially because he's in the division. But, you know, it just hasn't really worked out. Um, 
I guess, for them, for whatever reason. But um, I do expect him to be signed here pretty soon. Uh, you can never, ever have too many good offensive linemen. Um, it doesn't matter what position they play. Um, you always need offensive line. Always, always, always. You know, especially in today's, you know, golden age of quarterbacks and quarterback play. Uh, you know, you can never go wrong with having a good offensive lineman. You know, especially a good center. You know, somebody up, uh, up front who can, uh, you know, take care of everything that needs to be done, you know, as far as the 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 line calls are concerned and 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 you know the the protections and all that stuff you can never ever ever you know undervalue a good center in the nfl so um but yeah i am surprised that he is unsigned so number three um number four i'm actually going to go with akeem hicks the uh defensive tackle uh of the chicago bears so you know he is a guy he's a big really 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 big dude um you know, he's athletic for how big he is, but he's a guy I think I for sure thought that he was going to be traded at the trade deadline um, this past season. You know, you were hearing a lot of rumbling. I know the Chargers were looking for, you know, a guy to help with the run defense and, and Brandon Staley, you know, being familiar with Vic Fangio and the, you know, Chicago Bears and all that stuff. I thought for sure the Chargers were going to be able to pull that off, um, you know, especially considering how much, uh, you know his 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 contract is worth and how much he was going to be commanding in in free agency. He he's not a guy. I don't I don't think that he's looking for a huge deal. I think that he is uh, probably looking to go to the best team right now to go to the best situation. Um, you know, obviously in Chicago, their defense was really really good. Um, it's always been good, but they rely on the defense too much. The defense has to win them games, and the offense does not pick up the slack. So. You know, I think he probably wants to go to a team that has a good quarterback, um, a team that has some stability at quarterback, um, and a team that is going to carry their weight, you know, offensively. Um, you know, a lot of the, the, the Bears defenders, you know, are leaving, and, and I don't blame them, man, because they, they – when you watch Bears games last year, and I hated watching Bears games, but, I, you know, if, if it was on, it, you know, I, I would watch it, but it's – the defense does so much. They're on the field for so damn long. And, you know, when your defense is on the field for, you know, the game is only, what, 60 minutes long. If your defense is on the field for more than 30 minutes, more than half the game, I mean, damn, like, it's only so much that they can do. You know, these guys are getting tired, um, you know, and and they are being relied on to win games. And, you know, it it is... You know, you, you can have your defense go out there and get a stop to win you games. You can go out there and, you know, have your defense, uh, you know, give up field goals and all that stuff. But your defense cannot be the primary reason that you're winning games uh, in this era of the NFL. Your defense has to be complementary to your offense. Your offense has to do enough. You have to be able to control the clock. You have to be able to convert on third down. You know, you, you have to be able to stretch the field and do all these things offensively. And your defense has to come in and be you know, uh, kind of, a, you know, an accessory to it. You know, you see the past Super Bowl winners, you know, the last three years, their defenses have been, they haven't been great, but they've been good enough to win, you know, playoff games and Super Bowls. And I think the the Chicago Bears, their formula is completely messed up. Um, they are completely archaic. Um, they're still not over the 85 Bears, and they keep, Every regime change they have, they keep trying to recreate the 85 Bears, and they don't give a shit about their offense. And, you know, you have to watch Trubisky struggle, and then last year Justin Fields struggle, and they're just doing, like, not, it, it. none of it makes any sense. Like, the Bears have to get over it. And I've said this before in other videos. The Bears have to get over it. The 85 Bears are not coming back. Defenses like that are not coming back right now. The quarterbacks are too good. Offensive minds, offensive coaches in this league are too good. The Bears need to come into the modern era of the NFL and play like everybody else does but they don't do that and now they're losing all of their best you know defenders they are obviously lost Khalil Mack you know there's a a, a couple other guys that they lost that, that they've lost as well off the defense you know you don't expect Akeem Hicks to be back so hey you know it it, it is what it is but the Bears got to come along with it man I I, I like I said, I hate watching their games. I love football. If it's on, I'll watch it. But I'm not going to intentionally tune in, uh, you know, to a game. It's not a Bears game. It's not an appointment viewing for me because they suck so bad and 
I feel like I'm watching football in 1994 or something like that. So it, it's it's bad. But Akeem Hicks, very good player. Um, and I'm surprised that he's not signed yet. I don't think he wants a lot. But, again, he might just be taking his time just to see what his best options are. Um, and I'm sure he wants to be a part of a winning team, a winning culture as well, too. So he's number four. And so number five, uh, last but not least, and obviously, like I said, guys, I'm not I'm not doing this as rankings. Uh, this is not a ranking. I'm I'm just going down the list of who I think the top five free agents are. Um, so number five, I'm gonna go ahead and say Jarvis Landry, uh, wide receiver, Cleveland Browns. Now there's been conflicting reports about Jarvis Landry and why he hasn't signed yet. You know, I seen something where he uh was supposedly wanted a contract of like 20 million dollars a year or something like that he wanted to be one of the highest paid receivers in the nfl um and i think that's a pipe dream but I, you know i don't know how true that is it could be true maybe maybe not but th- that's definitely a pipe dream for jarvis landry um i know that he i think he fired his agent and he's got new representation and stuff too so again i think you know he's another guy he, he's probably weighing his options um i think the best option for him right now at this point, it's probably going back to Cleveland uh, with the acquisition of Deshaun Watson. Um, I think him and Deshaun Watson would really, really mesh really well, um, especially considering that Jarvis is is a possession receiver. He's a guy who can get open. He can work the slot. Um, you know, he can work the middle of the field. And you know, he would be he he would probably he would probably be Deshaun Watson's number one target um, once you know they they got together and once they once they've uh, you know played a few games and developed some chemistry he would probably be uh his number one target but you know the contract demands you know i i think i i i think that he knows that he's not worth 20 million dollars at this point in his career um you know but i don't know for sure i I don't i don't know how how true those reports were but i think that he knows that he's not worth that much so you know once the draft happens and once you know you start to get in the third wave of free agency i think some of these guys are going to have to realize that you know we're we're probably not going to get the money that we are asking at least not all of it so you just have to pick your best situation at that point and that's just like just like i said the other day that's pretty much what teams are going to have to uh, guys are going to have to do now um the big money is gone you know take one year deals uh take the one year prove it deals um you know get 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 all your money guaranteed for one year, you know, do whatever you have to do. But I think, you know, these guys are in a position now where there's a little bit of pressure on them. And, you know, as the days go by and, you know, you don't hear about these, these guys getting signed, I think, you know, they lose a little bit of leverage, you know, especially with the draft coming up, you know, there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of guys who take deals, uh, you know, because they don't want, a rookie to come in and take their spot or they don't want to you know try to have to compete with the rookie to you know to secure their spot or whatever so i i think a lot of these guys are going to take deals before the draft um i would be surprised if they start taking deals after the draft because teams are going to draft uh their needs so if you know a, a, a team is weak at wide receiver they're going to draft wide receiver and you know they're probably not going to pay you know 15 to 20 million dollars a year you know on wide receiver, so um, I think it would it would behoove a lot of these players to take deals before the draft and take you know try to get as much money as you can, obviously, but you know still be cognizant that you know you do need to your deals do need to be team friendly. So you know at this point, you know that's I I, I think that's all um, some of these free agents can do. Um, honorable mention is Odell Beckham. I think Odell, I think Odell would have made a lot of money. Uh, if he didn't get hurt in the Super Bowl. Um, and I think he would have been signed already if he did not get hurt in the Super Bowl. Um, you know, he's already had that ACL injury um, in the other leg. And, uh, you know, I think he, he tore it in the, in, in the um, I believe it was the right one this time. I think it was left the left one last time. I'm not sure. But I know he, you know, this is a second ACL injury. So obviously the injury concerns are there. I don't expect him to get any long-term deals. Um but I do expect Odell to probably get a one or two year deal. I don't. I, I don't even know what the dollar amount would be. But um, you know, possibly back with the Rams. I think that's probably his best. Um, you know, his his best option right now is probably to stay with the Rams. Um, you know, he he's gonna have to go to a team that really doesn't need him right now. 
and you know he can ramp up his his uh, recovery and stuff as the season goes along, and then by the time the playoffs come, you know you can add Odell to to the mix. You know, similar to what the Rams did with him, you know, this past season. So um, he's honorable mention. But you know, I think it, it's it's very interesting. You know, going into like I said, this is the second wave of free agency. Um, I think the third wave is going to be here after the draft next month, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what teams, um, you know, take chances on some of the players that I mentioned and, uh, you know, some of the other guys that are out there, too. There's a long list of of, uh, names, um, pretty big names as well, too. You know, I I can't remember a year where there's been this many big names um, unsigned, you know, at this point right now. Um, But, you know, it is what it is, right? It's just a business. Um... And, you know, this is always fascinating. So, you know, I just kind of wanted just to cover it, go over it a little bit. And, um, you know, that's, that's pretty much all I got for here, guys. That's it. Uh, don't forget to like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm almost at my goal of 1,000 followers. Um, excuse me, subscribers, whatever. But almost at my goal. So please, please, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Please, please give me those likes. Um, and uh, share the video, too, if you like the content. But uh, that's all I got for right now, guys. Um, then I'll see you next time.